Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice, where giraffes are powered by steam. And I have no idea what that vocally sounds like. Uh, it might be whistly. Maybe it's hissy, like lots of sibilants. Uh, but you know, if it's steampunky, I'm in. Plus, this group has been recommended for three months in a row by our patrons and finally rose to the top, like steam. So let's get to it. to stop. I wanted to talk about so many great moments, but then they're captured. I felt bad stopping them. And it's just, it's, it really grabs the attention so well. And yet it's also so soft at the same time. It's not one of those in your face kind of songs. It just has really great moments. Oh, hmm. Let's talk about some of these really, really cool moments. Well, let's talk about the band first, actually. Oh, oh, hey, there we go. So we've got three members here, and I understand that these characters come from a fictional universe. And a Bunny even has written some comic books um, expanding on this, which I think is really cool. Uh, so essentially, you have the spine and rabbit. The spine's on the left, rabbit's in the front. Uh, these two are actually siblings in real life. They're the founders of the group, um, David and Isabella Bennett. Um, and Isabella here, I think this was filmed before, I think it was two years before she transitioned, FYI. And then we have the John, um, who is on the far right. So those are our three, our three members there. Also, it's really endearing that this is filmed in a place that I personally know. This is in San Diego. Um, it's just a beautiful beach, uh, more of a cliff. Uh, it's really nice to walk on. Anyhow, I've, uh, visited there a few different times. It's um, very recognizable. I think I even have pictures taken there at one point. So anyhow, it's beautiful. Um, I I was so delighted when they started into their three-part harmony and the way they started breaking up the lines was so fascinating. But this beginning with this beautiful ooh and falsetto was gorgeous too. So we're just gonna go back all the way to the beginning and start again. A very shocking sound. So I'm fascinated by the mannerisms that they've designed for these characters. It reminds me of Chinese opera, the way that little tiny hand movements have a very specific meaning. It's very curious, and of, co of course it looks um, robotic in nature. I believe that they're essentially playing robots.
love that they've gone from making the background essentially black and white. I'm guessing they have some sort of masking going on here to keep the reds in their outfits, but the background um, shifts to color right as it feels we get into actual lyrics instead of just the ooze. The ooze are so beautiful. <sighs> yeah, very easy to listen to. So interesting how they've chosen certain colors in there. Oh, and that was a honeybee. You didn't have to look my way. Your eyes still haunt me to this day. But you did. Yes, you did. You didn't have to say my name. Ignite my circuits, a star of flame. But you did. Oh, the turpentine erased me whole. Who don't want to live my life alone? just so many tiny things in there that I find fascinating. One of the things is eye contact. Um, it seems that they've set up a, a very specific uh, focus point for the eyes to stick at that makes it feel perhaps a little bit more robotic, but at the same time, eyes are the window to the soul, right? You You know, you look in a person's eyes, you just understand them a little bit more. So what ends up happening is it feels maybe not as natural to maintain eye con that contact that long or really be looking at something for that long. But because we see Isabella's gaze for such a long time, you get a lot of emotion from it, from that window to the soul. Uh, I think that's such an effective decision in their mannerism choice. It's fascinating. Uh, I also am fascinated by the way uh, when they're doing the sort of calls in the three-part harmony, there's a certain head movement that I saw as well. It's just so surprising. And I also love the way that they panned the voices too. And oh, the harmonies and the way at one point there's even a cross in there it was really good. Okay, I'm gonna go back to here ish. Hey, ignite my stars flame, but you did. Oh, the turpentine erase me whole. Who don't want to live my life alone? So it's so interesting to me that they chose this more aspirated ending. Um, I think when I think about robots, I would think about a sound being produced that wouldn't necessarily have vocal folds and breath behind it specifically. Anytime when you're finishing up a phrase, if you sung a phrase and you try to taper the end of it to become more breathy. That's how you get that aspirated end, essentially. And uh, yeah, if you're a robot, you wouldn't necessarily have um, this sort of breath capacity to do that, right? I think about robotic sounds um, or just more mechanical sounds are going to have more of a beep boop kind of digital thing happening. So this makes it feel so personal and human, essentially. Let's go back a little bit. Catch that. You are my life. Oh, 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 I set me free. My honey will be. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. Um, that's pretty. There's also a really cool sound right after that aspirated ending. 
um, that made me think, okay, maybe the aspiration is happening partly because it's steam powered. I don't know, perhaps it was just sort of a little side, side note there. There was a sort of a or something in there that oh, I like the extra sounds they're making essentially. Set me free. Interesting. My honey'll be. She's floating up there is so exquisite. It's beautiful. It's wonderfully controlled. Um, it sounds effortless, but at the same time, you know, if there's this kind of really continuous airflow going to keep that uh, float happening, you know, that's not totally effortless. That requires some really good breath control. And the choice of harmonies underneath is exquisite or it feels um almost classic it's so interesting to me to see the mannerisms paired with this futuristic idea steampunk right and then set in this outdoor space but then you hear these harmonies that feel like they could be from 40 years ago and just a nice acoustic guitar in there. All of those things put together makes this completely feel timeless to me. I love it. You didn't have to smile at me. Your grin's the sweetest that I've ever seen. But you Yes, you did. You didn't have to offer your hand. Cause since I've kissed it, I am at your command. But you did. Oh, a turpentine race me whole. Cause I who don't want, want to live my life alone. you must feel it too at this point, right? Krakino, you must feel it too, right? This makes you smile. Just, I can't listen to this and not have a huge grin on my face. And I realize that the that there's a lot of pain that Rabbit's essentially going through from a loss of honeybee at this point. Like, even at the beginning says, you didn't have to look my way, right? Um, loss. But there's something just so sweet at the same time and the beautiful voices and the soft playing, it makes, makes me grin. And I love the emotions that they're also creating and the fact that these characters that our robots are so relatable at the same time, despite really robotic movements as well. They just touched on this crazy, amazing balance. I feel a bit baffled by it. I also am totally loving Isabella's ability to move in and out of falsetto without making that register transition seem super obvious. Most most people, when they go between registers, there's a big gap in the sound, especially if you're first exploring that, and there's a big jump. And she makes it sound so easy, once again. Yeah, her voice overall, it just sounds easy. I can't imagine that it's truly as easy as it sounds. I imagine there was lots of uh, practice and technique that went into it. But 
let's go back and continue. like um like something in the programming stopping on life right for Isabella I can't go on anymore without honeybee alone while I was waiting for you all my As an experiment, you should try singing in falsetto, if you, if you sing in falsetto, of course, and experiment with the different vowels up there. Try it on an A ah vowel, on an E vowel, on an O vowel. Isabella seems to have used oos and es mostly in falsetto. And for most people, that's an easier vowel in falsetto, which is pretty cool to hear her doing that. Um, it's really fun to play around with different vowels though, and you should try it in different registers of voice as well. Um, you know, the lowest lows tend to like aw, where it's a lot more rounded and open. And uh, for whistle register, for example, a lot of times the mouth is fairly neutral. You're not really thinking about any vowels in particular other than can I get the sound out? <laughs> So yeah, it makes a huge difference which vowel you pick uh, and that shifts wildly depending on what vocal register you're singing in. So just notice how this E vowel seems to float so effortlessly. Hello, goodbye, it was nice to know you myself without you that I'll never know <laughs> Hello, goodbye, it was nice to know you how I find myself without you that I'll never know Okay, so I just have to find one more time myself without you <laughs> that I'll never know That seagull will forever be famous. Very impressive timing seagull. Uh, I am really curious who in this group does the choreography. I love it. I love the simpleness of it, but the stylized version. Um, I, it makes me think of lots of times when we had very specific stylized choreography for uh, an opera scene or for an entire opera. Sometimes you would get things that were very specific to this scene you were setting, to this world you were creating. and. If one person moved outside of it, suddenly it would destroy the entire image. And I feel like I've been drawn into another world because of these, ah, the movements they're creating that are the norm in their world. And if somebody moved normally here after I've seen it for three and a half minutes, I would feel that something was entirely wrong. But if I saw them in real life, out among other people and they were doing this, I would think that they were wrong. So it's just, it's so interesting how movement patterns can create a culture, an environment, another world. And especially when you get them this stylized, it really adds a certain height to it. So I, I love what they're doing. And myself without you that I'll never know. So you'll notice she's uh, she's shifting from lower voice to falsetto on no, and has masked that shift so well. But what do I know? It's great. 
she even leans a little bit into it. Uh, and again, O vowel, that tends to be nice in the falsetto too. It's fair, uh, she's closing it fairly, so it's not no, but it's really no, kind of a more closed O vowel. But what do I know? But what do I know? I let myself go. Rhythmic uh, addition in that, and the ooh, it feels again very human. of more instruments there, right? Um, of course, we heard a drum kit enter. I think that's a piano as well. I was thinking we might have heard a bass a few times before I wasn't sure that it might be in there too. Now, when you have more sound enter, often I expect the frequencies to shift and have more here. Uh, of course, She's already been singing fairly high with that falsetto. And so to match that change, uh, they decided to do a different thing with the arrangement. And where Isabella went into a much fuller voice, which I found a particularly fascinating decision. It was effective. It really worked. And we started to get a lot more low sounds overall. So I'm going to I'm gonna go back a little bit to that again. I am nope. back to wow, this is so easy. To listen to. Oh, ah. it was nice to yeah, it's really nice to get the low, low sound moving into it, even as we had the other instruments entering. It was nice to know you how I find myself without you that I am never. Sometimes he'll do a little thing out the side of his mouth and go, woo, like, woo, why, why, no? It's one of those funny mannerisms that he's developed for his character that's extremely endearing. The crazy and I never thought I was crazy, but what do I know? What, what do I know? <laughs> I let myself know. It was nice to know you out. I find I myself without know. you. Hello, goodbye. I'm rather crazy. And I, I never thought I was crazy. Oh, Hello, goodbye. It was nice to know you out. I find myself without you. Hello, goodbye. I'm rather crazy. And I never thought I was crazy. Ah. This is. This is. Oh, it's just so intriguing. It sounds almost like the programming starts to repeat. It's winding down in the way that they keep re repeating the phrases, hello, goodbye, twas nice to know you. And ah, it feels like it's looping in the programming there at the ending. 
it's winding down or, or deteriorating. Goodbye, it was nice to know you out. I find I'm myself without you. Hello, goodbye, I'm rather crazy. I and I never thought I was crazy. Hello, goodbye, it was nice to know you out. I find myself without you. Hello, goodbye, I'm rather crazy. And I never thought I was crazy. overall impression is that I love the detailed creativity that they brought to this. The hand movements, the choreography, even the way that they've arranged the instruments to come in and the harmonies, the intricate interweaving, and the little tiny vocal stylisms too, all fantastic. I also love the humanness that they brought to this. For robots, they are extremely relatable and the song is very, very catchy. If I were to recommend another group to listen to that has that creativity in it, a lot of acapellaments as well, I would say maybe some voice play. You can check them out in this playlist. And also thank you so much patrons for this recommendation. I'm gonna be listening to a lot more of Steam Powered Giraffe. Thank you, thank you. And I'll see you guys somewhere soon.